Well, today we're uh, going to try to uh, do a uh, valve adjustment on the turd right here. Uh, 1980 uh, Mercedes station wagon, diesel. Got the 3.0 uh, liter uh, non-turbo diesel in it. And it's, uh, believe it or not, it's a five-cylinder car. It means I got ten valves to adjust. And, uh, hold on up there. I've never done this before, so uh, I'm kind of just winging it. Got all the books, and I think I got all the tools. So let's see what happens. Well, this is the, uh, the engine uh, from the uh, left side looking forward. And these are the uh, injector lines to the uh, cylinders. This is the injection pump down here. This is the, uh, the uh, fuel filter, one of the fuel filters, the final fuel filter, the fine one. And I guess my first task is going to be to remove the uh, throttle linkage in this vacuum stuff so I can get to, uh, oh, in this uh, recirculating uh, pipe, so I can remove the uh, valve cover. Probably have to take off the uh, injection uh, feed pipes too, so I can uh, turn the engine over without it starting. Like I said, I've never done this before. I'm looking forward to it. Oh boy. I got the, uh, the cover off, and uh, that there is your uh, your timing chain which drives your uh, your camshaft and down there is the uh, the valves all ten of them I guess this is the uh, camshaft bearings it's all nicely coated in oil uh, here are the uh, injectors going into the uh, cylinders I uh, didn't have to remove that many bolts to get the cover off it actually has just got four little uh, bolts holding it on, um, two on each side, and then they came off fairly easy. Uh, the cover itself is a uh, piece of aluminum, as you can see. Very nicely made, nice casting. I'll clean that up before I put it back on. And uh, all in all, I'd say this is uh, this is like jewelry to me. Absolutely beautiful. And now I have to uh, hook up for the first time a, uh, a new toy I bought. Alright, since this is the first time I've done this, it, I did the first one without being on camera so I could figure it out. <laughs> and, uh, well, you got, you got these two wrenches, right? Uh, these came with the car. You can buy them. They're rather pricey. Some people make them by bending wrenches. Uh, this one's got to be thin enough to fit on the bottom nut. You can kind of see it if you you get in there and take it apart. Now, this is a feeler gauge. Uh, I don't have metric, but I'm using this is pretty close, uh, 0.012 inch, 12 thousandths, and I adjusted this so it kind of just drags as it goes through under the cam. Let me zoom a little bit. Okay, you can see it just kind of, there's the cam. You just got to be able to push it through, have it drag a little bit. And your wrenches, to adjust it, you uh, hook the long handle went on the bottom nut. And it's not really that easy to get in. Kind of finicky. There you go, and you put the top one like this. And by working them together, uh, which I still haven't got the real hang of, you kind of loosen the lock nut and then you adjust with the top nut uh, till you get the feeler gauge just right. So, uh, a little tricky, but I think uh, practice will make perfect on this. I splurged a little bit here. I went and bought a uh, uh, remote ignition switch, which you hook up to your battery into the starter solenoid, and it allows me to. Uh, Rotate the engine to get this cam up. Here's the other cam, so you can get it 
the bump on the top of the cam as best you can at 180 from the uh, the bearing surface down there which you use your feeler gauge on. Now that's an intake manifold so it's a different setting than the exhaust which was the first one I did. Oh and by the way uh, over here there's the rack uh, you can find the uh, I guess you call it the rack shutoff. I'm not sure of that. But there's a lever that everybody knows that when your car won't stop because there's a bad vacuum leak or something, you push the lever under the hood and you can see it pulls this up. So I put a piece of wire on it to make sure the engine wouldn't start. Uh, the glow plugs aren't running so it probably wouldn't, but I didn't want to take any chances. Oh, well, that threw me off. I uh, was forced to take a little rain break there. I can't remember where I was at. Oh, that was tight. Uh, this is the last one, by the way. So, uh, of course, it's going to be the most difficult because we've got to get way back here to do anything. Uh, And you can see I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm kind of just playing with it. You know it when it's right though. I just can't do it quick. Bet you if I was to do it a thousand times, I'd get it down. Yeah. so tight I bent the gauge. Well, I uh, put the cover back on, tightened it up. It took a little while. I had to take off a water hose to get it to fit right. And uh, I'll put that on back right now before I forget to lose all my water. And uh, now I got to figure out the. Uh, I'll put the water hose back on. I got to figure out the linkage. I think I'll uh, try to. I'll try to adjust the uh, the idle speed. Uh, you do it with a couple of uh, rods. These things right here are the uh, throttle linkage. It's kind of little ball things they fit on there. And there's like when you press the pedal, you go through maybe uh, one, two, three, four, four links before it gets down to the engine. So it's kind of neat. Okay, this is the test. See if I got it all together right. Transmission shifts correctly. Uh, it's just a different, a different vehicle. So I'm really quite pleased. I was so pleased that I decided to tidy up the uh, the engine compartment. 